Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Kostas Lozanis. I am the owner and head chef of Opa Greek Taverna. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're making lamb bourguignon pot pie. I've been making this dish actually since I was a kid. It was called beef bourguignon, beef burgundy. And I thought, why don't we bump it up a notch and Greek it up a little bit. It is the winter time right now and we need something that will match this frigid weather and warm your heart and warm your day. And I thought, what better thing to do than to make a nice pot pie, Greek style. Stick around, you're gonna love this recipe. So the key ingredient that's gonna make this recipe a signature dish at my restaurant is going to be the lamb. And the lamb is amazing. We're using a boneless leg of lamb imported from Australia. You can find this at your boutique grocery store. The lamb is just gonna add like this extra layer of characterization to the dish. It's gonna incorporate just a little bit of gaminess, a little bit of smokiness that you get from the lamb. And I don't want you to think that those flavors are like harsh. It's not like a gamey dish and it's not a smoky dish. It just gives some subtle notes and some richness that the beef is lacking. Pretty much all I'm gonna do with this boneless leg of lamb is I'm just gonna trim a little bit of this excess fat. Some of this fat is not a problem at all because it's gonna cook out whenever we are preparing the dish, but just try to trim up a little bit of all that excess. Try not to waste any of that precious meat. What we're gonna do with this leg of lamb is basically just gonna start uh, breaking it down, cubing it up, and getting ready to sear this in our Dutch oven. We're gonna take our cubed lamb and sear it and some bacon. So first thing we're gonna do is cook up this bacon in our Dutch oven. So one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is overcrowding the pan. When you overcrowd the pan, you're going to steam the meat instead of browning the meat. So make sure you only do a few pieces at a time. All right, all right. Wow. This lamb pan seared so beautifully. My goodness, that looks amazing. Now that we seared off the lamb, we're gonna go ahead and chop and prepare all of our vegetables. I already started a little bit, but we need to add a few more carrots and some onions to the fawn. Basically the fawn is like the, the fat that's seared to the bottom of the pan. And we're gonna deglaze that with a little bit of red wine. I know I'm supposed to use a good Greek red wine since we're Greeking it all up, but I did find uh, a nice bottle of Robert Mondavi. This is a, a Cabernet. If you want to use a Merlot, if you just want to go all out and like grab like a French Burgundy wine, that would work too. Just, you know, a good red wine that you don't mind drinking with dinner. Let's go ahead and get some carrots and some onions chopped. You can use red onions. I'm gonna use white onions. It doesn't really matter too much. The red onions are a little sweeter. Just give them a quick Nothing special, because it's gonna cook down pretty good into the pan. Add these to our little bowl here. Woo! <laughs> Getting a little emotional over here. Getting a little emotional with these onions, I'm telling you. Good onions, good onions. Wow. I'm sorry guys, seriously. Seriously, let me get one more onion real quick. It's so funny, my wife says that I'm not an emotional person. This video is gonna prove her wrong. Crying like a baby right now. All right, let's get one more onion real quick, sliced up. In addition to these onions, we're gonna add some pearl onions to the stew as well. Excellent. You know, when I was a kid, I used to sneak into my parents' refrigerator all the time and steal carrots out, hoping that I could be like Bugs Bunny 
I just don't know if today's generation will ever understand the power of a good carrot. So into the Dutch oven go the onions and carrots. I'm also gonna add a little bit of tomato paste to this. I like to add the tomato paste kinda towards the beginning so that way it will cook out a little bit of that harshness in the tomatoes, a little bit of that acid. And when that cooks in there really nice, it mellows out the tomatoes. I'm using this little garlic press, which you don't have to use, I just happen to have it here. It's just gonna strain all of that good garlic out of there. I'm gonna add about six cloves of garlic to this batch. Back into the pot, we're gonna add that beautiful lamb that we have. To the lamb, we're gonna do some good pepper. I always like to crush my pepper freshly. It just adds so much more flavor to the pepper than if you just buy it pre-ground. A pinch of salt, season that meat up a little bit. Let's go ahead and deglaze the pan with two cups of that good red wine. I like to pour actually three cups of wine. Four cups come in a bottle, so you do three for the stew and one for you. Add a little bit of flour. This is gonna help thicken the stew up a bit. So cover that up with four cups of beef stock. We are going to add in our aromatics, rosemary and some thyme, two bay leaves, and I almost forgot our pearl onions. Okay, we have added everything to the lamb bourguignon. Now we are going to throw back in our bacon, little bacon chips, add those back in there. Also, I do wanna add a beef bouillon cube. It's just really gonna help with that beef stock, just bump it up a notch. Any beef bouillon cube would work, just Grab it, if it's yellow, it's probably gonna be chicken. If it's red, it's gonna be beef. Don't grab the wrong cube. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but a nice beef bouillon cube. Just crush this up and add it in there as well. People are gonna wonder how'd you get that intense, deep, rich flavor, and that will be your secret, okay? We are going to put this beautiful dish into the oven and just let that lamb melt away let the fat just disintegrate and the muscle just fall apart. Into the oven this goes, I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. Stir all of this beef bouillon and the bacon inside. And it's gonna be really watery, but don't you worry, all the liquids are going to reduce down to this thick, rich gravy that you're gonna enjoy. So into a 350 degree oven, for three hours if you can tolerate it, two hours if you must. Put a lid on your Dutch oven and let's get this thing cooking. Let's pull this big Dutch oven out. It's been cooking for three hours and everything is smelling amazing. Let me show you guys what's inside here. Oh, I just got hit with so much flavor there. You have no idea. Doesn't that just look gorgeous? Now that that is all cooked up, I'm gonna wait to the very end and cook up my baby Bella mushrooms. The reason why I do that is because I do not want the mushrooms to cook down to nothingness. So we're gonna add a little bit of butter and olive oil to a pot, throw in our baby portobello mushrooms and give those a nice little saute. Cook those down until they're translucent. Add them back into your Dutch oven and let them mix and mingle with all of the other amazing ingredients in the pot. Uh, all right, you guys, we have the lamb bourguignon pot pie filling 
that we just got out of the refrigerator. We let all of those flavors kind of marry overnight and intensify. It's gonna be amazing. I like to use these individual casserole dishes as a way to kind of portion control the lamb bourguignon. The downside is you wanna make sure that you're kind of like seeing what you're putting in each casserole dish because you don't wanna give like one person all the lamb and another person all of the mushrooms. I'm gonna take our beautiful puff pastry. You can buy this at your local grocery store. And again, you can make your own pastry from scratch if you want to. Uh, we just, I really like using the, uh, the puff pastry, it's really nice. And it adds an elegant touch to the uh, pot pie. And you don't even have to do a pot pie, like you can serve this lamb bourguignon over some nice garlic mashed potatoes and that would work out just fine as well. Take the extra baking dish that you have not used yet and give that a little rustic cut. Try to get as close to the edge as you can so you can get two dishes out of one sheet. And we're just gonna stencil around the baking dish, leaving a little bit of space so that way you give it that rustic look. Put just a little, just a little bit of flour on here. And you can take like this pastry sheet and just throw it over a 16 by nine. Like that's something you can easily do instead of doing these little individual bowls. So don't feel at all like you need to go out and buy 12 of these individual casserole dishes. You're going to want to pierce the puff pastry if you're using puff pastry. Just give that a few little pokes with a fork. It's gonna help let that pastry not puff up so much. But you decide how puffy you want your puff pastry to be. Take our little casserole dish here. Lay this right on top. I'm gonna press down on all the sides like this. The key to getting that nice golden crust is a nice egg wash. Take one whole egg, a little bit of water, and we're gonna beat this together and brush this on top of the casserole dish. I never was much of a painter, but I guess this is my my chance to actually put my painting skills to the test. Brush this thing all over. On the sides. Don't forget the edges. Guys, let me know in the comment section below if you have stuck around this long into the cooking video. You guys are gladiators. I know so many weaker people have already clicked away from the video, but if you're already on the pastry sheet section of this video, you guys rock. Let me know what you guys like to cook in the winter time. Like what's your favorite feel good, warm you up meal? I'm thinking about doing a lamb chili. What do you guys think about that? Like that would be pretty dope, wouldn't it? Do like a cool lamb chili, maybe like in January or something. Cool, excellent. All right, one little hole in this guy. Turns out I don't have any parchment paper or foil, but I would just line a baking dish with some foil or parchment paper. That way you don't make a mess if any of the insides bubble over. Got two of them done here. I'm gonna see if I can fit two more. I don't think I will be able to. I think this guy's only gonna hold three. Into a 350 degree preheated oven, we're gonna bake these until that crust is golden brown and all of the insides have been heated up to 165 degrees. All work is done. Let these guys cool down for like 10 minutes. You don't wanna burn anybody's mouth off before you serve them, but they are ready to go. If you wanna serve it with a nice salad, that's pretty much all they need 
like everything is actually in the pie. And that is the end of today's video. If you like these cooking videos, let me know. I don't normally cook at the restaurant just because we're so busy. I have to get up like 2 a.m. or stay there till 2 a.m. But now that I've kind of repossessed my dad's kitchen and turned it into this like kitchen network test kitchen, I think I could do more of these. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you want us to uh, show you some more recipes and stuff like that. Just don't want this channel turning into a cooking channel, if you know what I mean. Anyway, if you're new to the channel and you want to stick around for some more videos, make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and we will see you guys in the next video.